All right, there we go. Man, I was having having some difficulties there with Zoom. <laughs> it, it was not liking me this morning. That or it might be just the stuff I'm working on right now has got me so sidetracked and so excited. Uh, it's really cool stuff. So I'll, I'll definitely be sharing that with you today. Uh, Linda, you had a question? <clears throat> just there you okay. go. Okay. So I believe it was two weeks ago, you were helping um, Richard with uh, his whatever that I forgot um, about the backlinks, adding them to his uh, Kartra. So with another website designer like Shopify, which I'm with, mm -hmm. is that something I ask Shopify how I add backlinks to my store? Or is it something that I should be doing? Well, when you're when you're referring to backlinks, are you talking about links from other sites coming to you for SEO purposes? Uh, yeah. Okay, so that so that I, it it ranks you higher, correct? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So that's nothing that you have to physically do to your website. That's you have to get someone else to put that link on their site to link to you. So you don't have to do. Oh. Any integration on your own site to get backlinks okay. backlinks is literally someone on another website putting a link to your website so okay. no no integration necessary you just have to beg borrow and plead to get them to do it for you <laughs> okay because um if uh if they're on shopify with me like i mean they're they have a Shopify store. So would they know how to do that? If if they can put content on their website, they can put a link on their website. So what you okay. would do, like from an SEO perspective, for you to get the most bang for your buck, I usually supply them with the actual text that I want them to put and the actual link that I want them to put. Because... Okay. Here's the, here's the thing about the, the backlinks. Getting a backlink of any sort is just a link that goes to your website. But if you want it to be the most powerful link, you actually link the text that you want the keyword to, to score for your site. <clears throat> so, so you pick the keyword and yeah. have them link to that keyword. Correct. So if you were trying to link for blue suede shoes, for instance, yes. you might have a, a block of text that's talking all about the blue suede shoes. And then in the text that says blue suede shoes, say link this text to this URL. And they call that anchor text. The anchor oh, text okay. is the actual linked text. Okay. So, you you know, and a lot of people, if you ask them for a link and they're not familiar with this, they might just put like click here. So to the search engine, you're telling the search engine that your site is about click here, which it's clearly not. It's about blue suede shoes. So okay. that tells the search engine, okay, we expect to find relevant content at the other end of this link based on the anchor text of the link. That's how you okay. get the most bang for your buck. Okay, so for example, I don't know if Abba's on here, but um, she sells um, items that are for parosmia, so people that can't smell because okay. of COVID or whatever. So I made an ebook. So I put her link and I put another person on this um, webinar on there, Chandra, and um, about she sells. Um, some kind of water, Kagan water, I think it's called. Mm -hmm. And sure. so I listed them in my ebook, the website, each of their websites. Okay. But not a keyword. So. Okay. So you didn't link it. You just talked about them. I just talked about them. Okay. So, so that's a different okay. thing though. Putting a link in an ebook, that's a downloadable PDF typically. Now, not to say that there's not value in that link too, but it's not seen as a typical backlink like in a search engine from a web one website to another. 
But here's the thing with backlinks, whether they're on a website or in a PDF or in an email or whatever, Google sees everything. And if they see people clicking on that link, they still look at the anchor text of the link. If it finds relevant content on the other side when it passes through, it's more points. It's like with SEO, you're stacking points in your favor. And at the end of the day, whoever has the most points is going to win. Now, there's things that add points and there's things that subtract points. So let's say you did something that you shouldn't do in SEO, which is overdo any one thing and make it look not natural. So let's say you got, you know, a thousand people to link the blue suede shoes and there's no other variations of the link. That's not very natural. So as you're stacking the points on one side of the abacus, you're removing them on the other because you're not believable. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, a lot of people see that as a penalty. There's never been a penalty in SEO. Richard, take note of that. There's never been a penalty. That was all complete bullshit. That was SEO guys trying to scare you and all this stuff. There has only been addition of points and subtraction of points. The penalty, there's only one real penalty, and that's if your site gets removed or, or banned or sandboxed. That's an actual penalty. But dropping in rank, all the SEO guys thought, oh, if I drop in rank, I got penalized. No, you just did something stupid to take away your points, and you fell in the rank because of that. You did not get penalized. You just got rewarded for what your value is. And, you know, if you're providing good value, you'll never have points removed. But if you do stuff that's spammy, they will remove the points. And you will drop in rank. It doesn't mean you're penalized. It just means you're not as good as the next guy next to you. He's got more points. That's all it means. So it's a points-based game. So is it that you have to... <laughs> Like, um, I if I put them in a blog mm -hmm. and I put them in the ebook, that would be better. Because yeah, the, the more links the more you have, I, okay, the better. Like, okay. you so might I, also, if it's relevant to your audience, you might actually send an email blast on their behalf, put the link in the email as well, because ultimately oh. links are all about traffic. The more people that visit that site you're trying to promote, the more Google's going to pay attention to it. Okay. So that's another points-based system for links. If you've got 10,000 links and no one's clicking on them, Google's going to look at that and say, you know, this doesn't look very good. I'm going to take some points away. Okay. If Google so sees like only two links, but a lot of people are clicking and they're getting a good user experience, it's going to be stacking points on top of points on top of points. So okay. for a very little effort that's really focused, you can get a lot of SEO value. So I can do that for them. For them to link back to me, All they have to do the same. Yes. And okay. That's correct. So, all right. Now, what okay. you want to do when you're looking for say, link partners like that. The best link partner is somebody that's got a lot of traffic, a lot of volume of traffic, and you can put something that's relevant to those viewers. And you get a, you know, a really good catch line, you get a really good call to action, and you basically want to create activity on that link. That link gets activity, Google's going to look at it. I guarantee it. Now, how would you find that out? Well, you you would ask them, you know, like how many visitors how many visitors come to this page on average? Uh, they can look at their okay. analytics and they could tell you uh, that. You know, if they're a high volume site, high traffic site, that's a good link partner, especially okay. if you can get people to click the link. Google also has a patent called well, I don't know what it's actually called. It's called some funky number. But what I call it was the likelihood of a click. And that what they look at is how likely is someone to click a link on any given page? And some of the factors are if it's closer to the top, it's more likely to get clicked. So it carries more value. If it's bolded, 
it carries more value because it's more likely to get seen and clicked. If it's underlined, it's more likely to get seen and get clicked. If it's featured in any way, it's more likely to get seen and clicked. So the patent, I refer to it as the likelihood of a click. And from testing over the years, the more likely it is to be clicked on, the more points that I've seen it give. Like, for okay. instance, some people will have links that are at the bottom of the page. They're not highlighted. They're not linked. They're just kind of hidden links. They're trying to put links in, like they're trying to, to scam the system. They're, they're like telling people, hey, I'll give you a link if you give me a link. But then the link that they're going to give to you, they're going to hide it. Okay. <laughs> they don't want people clicking, leaving their site. So right. when okay. Google looks at that, that link's almost useless because the likelihood of it getting clicked is slim to none that somebody would find that link. So if they can convince you to give them a good link and you give them a crappy one back, you just, you know, added more value, but you didn't give any. Yeah. So okay. That's, okay. There's a lot of games to the system. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's a lot to figure out. Technology is. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Going to Absolutely. And it's, it's one of the things that I am probably most excited about right now is transitioning. You know, I, I, I always talk to you guys about, you know, when opportunities come, they all, well, they often close doors. Like I've been forced from business to business to business from technology changing and, and what have you. And I always like to go out on top. Like with my photo career, I went out on top. I was like one of the top paid commercial photographers in Orange County. And I exited before it fell apart, before it got destroyed. I was out clean. So I, I like perfect timing. And, you know, in, in what I've been doing, I've been transitioning ever since from one technology source to another. And I've finally, I've finally decided, and this is going to shock a lot of people. I finally decided to transition out of SEO. It's the perfect time for me to exit because I will have gone out on top again. SEO with the advent of chat GPT is going to be a completely different game in a very, very short window. It's going to allow like, like if I'm going to be in something, I want to be the top dog. I want to be the one that nobody can beat. And when I'm competing against AI, I don't have that edge anymore. So it's time for me to go. <laughs> I have actually, I've got, you know, commercial clients that I've been transitioning over the last few months and basically moving them into consulting. So I've been training their teams to do what my team was doing for them and getting them basically self-sufficient. So they don't need me. They just need me for the, the consulting. And they pay me a thousand dollars an hour to consult with them. So it's a great gig. <laughs> it takes all the pressure off me. I don't have to manage a team anymore. So just, just this week, I have actually let my entire outsource team go after 20 years. They've been with me for 20 years. And they're all now out of my hair. I have, I have found another company that is pretty good at doing, you know, what my guys used to do. They can do it for almost the same price and they're equipped for massive volume. So that's why they can keep it at that price. They can do massive volume. So all I'm doing, all of my resellers, I'm actually opening up other opportunities for the resellers you know, with different products and things that are more profitable, less pain in the ass, and they're going to absolutely fall in love with what I'm going to lay down on a silver platter for them. So keeping everybody happy. The only one's not happy is the, probably the SEO team that just got cut loose. <laughs> 
but uh, it's a very, very exciting time. And part of it, all of it basically has to do with AI and computing power. It's like, I told you guys that that is going to kill a lot of industries. That's going to close a lot of doors on people. And I don't like doors closed on me. So I'm exiting the room before the door closes. And I'm going through the window of opportunity that it's opening. So the first one through the window always makes the most and has the easiest ride. So just to let you guys know, that's what I'm doing. I'm doing it again. Not abandoning anything. I'm going to do one final SEO training that will last a lifetime. I don't know if you guys realize or not, but SEO hasn't changed all that much. There's a lot of people that want you to think it has, but the standards that Yahoo set back in the 1990s are still the base standards for on-page. Nothing really changed about it. There's a set of ways to do things that if you did all of them, you would be impervious to any SEO changes. Because no matter what they changed, you would always have the right thing when they changed to it. That's how I've kept all my big commercial clients free and clear. Every time there's an SEO update, they do nothing but go higher. Because when they change, they shift. They always shift to what I'm ready for. It's already sitting there waiting for them. So over the years, you know, for the last 25 years or however long I've been doing SEO, I haven't had to worry about SEO shifts. People say, oh, did you notice the big SEO algorithm shift? I'm like, no, all I noticed was my sites went higher. <laughs> so it's it's pretty pretty standard set stuff that if you do everything right to begin with, you should be good forever. And it, it goes on the basic principle that I've been telling people since day one. If you do things as a business owner, in a business owner's eyes, if it makes sense to them, Ultimately, it's going to make sense to Google. Doing stuff outside of what a normal business owner would do to promote their business is never going to hold up long term as an SEO tactic or strategy. Never. Never has, and it never will. Like a lot of the stuff that Google puts out, they have a big PR machine. They'll put out information to make it look like the, the game zigged and they want to see who zags. And it's a trap. It's nothing more than a trap. Like the whole thing about disavowing links, if any of you have been in SEO for any length of time, you know that was a big thing. And all the SEO guys were going in and disavowing links, which basically Google said, hey, if you've got bad links, they're hurting you. Just tell us what you did. We'll remove them and you'll get your rank back. Now, you basically just put your hand up and said, yeah, I was trying to manipulate your system. Now you're on their radar for somebody they don't like. You think your rank's coming back? <laughs> no. <laughs> it, it's like, I can't believe like how stupid are people to buy into that? Google just had you self-identify yourself as their enemy. You do not want to be Google's enemy. It's not going to work out for you. It's like standing in front of a dragon throwing rocks at him. Right? What do you think is going to happen? He's going to rear back his head. He's going to take a big breath and he's going to throw the flame at you. And you're not going to fare very well. There's not a thing you can do because you can't fight a dragon. You know, not without a sword anyway. <laughs> and a good strategy. <laughs> <laughs> so I am going to do one final SEO training that I'm going to evergreen and it'll last forever. I'm going to do the private consulting with the big companies that need me. And I'm going to move into what people actually need. You know, we talk about this all the time, what they think they need and what they really need and what they'll actually buy. It's really getting difficult to sell SEO at this point because of the competition. One of the things that's happened, there's so many SEO firms, there's so many websites, like there is just a million times more websites 
in the market today than there was when I started. There's a million times more people trying to manipulate the results than when I started. So it's just gotten such a nasty pool to swim in. It's bloody water. But the thing that they've always been doing SEO for, there's one purpose for SEO, and that is to generate leads so you can make sales. So if I can sidestep that and just sell them the leads and have them not have to go through the SEO to get the leads, and I could sell it to them for a fraction of the price. Remember, I've been telling you guys about the lead generation system that I was working on. Well, I finally got to test it this week. And I turned it on. Uh, when was it? I think it was Sunday night. Turned the thing on. <laughs> and I made a mistake when I did that because I said, give me unlimited leads, anything you can find. And this is an AI system. This thing has an unlimited amount of horsepower. And what it's doing, it's creating leads based off buyer intent. Now think about that for a minute. A buyer intent lead, not a buyer intent click. Actual lead with a name, an email address, a phone number, the whole enchilada. So these leads that I generated were based on SEO. I was going to test it out selling my site pop software. So I want to generate leads based on people that are interested in SEO, doing SEO. So I set up a keyword list, piped it all in, set the campaign up, and I turned it on Sunday night. And when I woke up in the morning, there was over 600 leads. This is name, address, phone number, email address, full physical address. And I'm like, holy shit. I've bought these leads before. I've done pay-per-click campaigns in Google and the, the clicks, not a lead, just a click, the average price per click on SEO leads is anywhere between $12 and $25. And you've got to get 20 to 50 of them to actually convert somebody into a prospect, into an actual lead. So if you add that up, you're talking about, you know, Five hundred to a thousand dollars per lead, right? And I just generated six hundred of them overnight at a cost of about two dollars a piece. Not five hundred, not a thousand, two dollars. And I can do this with just about any keyword on the planet. And so, anyway. Long story short, I'm like, holy shit, I am not prepared to follow up on 600 leads right now. <laughs> so I pumped the brakes. I cut it down to like 50 leads. Yeah, Richard, if you want phone numbers to call, I can swamp the shit out of you. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> but But anyway, I cut it down to 50. So each morning now, this thing is generating 50. I've got it restricted down to 50. These leads can be anything that is within the Google ad platform. And what I mean by that is it could be national, it could be worldwide, it could be localized. You can put in a zip code and restrict it to, you know, a 10 mile radius. So like real estate leads, buyer intent people that are typing in real estate terms and consuming content looking how about a $2 real estate lead? Somebody that's in market looking to buy or sell. I see a couple of people on here that would probably like those. <laughs> yeah. But literally anything, car dealerships, car dealerships pay like $75 a lead or, or a click rather, not even leads. There is a lot of high dollar things here. So the, the window of opportunity that just opened for me is unimaginable. I could generate leads and just become a lead gen company. 
sell leads all day long. I could open up the software to resellers that want to do this for clients. I mean, Jim, imagine going out to your clients and saying, hey, guys, you don't have to spend a thousand dollars a month on SEO anymore. How about for the same thousand dollars, I just give you 500 leads. I mean, is that going to make your life better or worse? <laughs> yeah, we got to talk, John. <laughs> yeah. Like, this is a game changer. This is an absolute game changer. So what, I, what I've done so far, I've taken a couple of the top internet marketing guys that really know how to build funnels. These guys are million-dollar converters. And I'm basically setting them up so I can pipe these leads into their funnels and let them tell me what the conversion ratios are, the real conversion ratios are. Like, how good are these? Because that's the only piece I don't know. I know I can generate an unfathomable number of these. I just don't know how good they are. So that's the only piece to the puzzle that I'm waiting on to prove because I need proof. You know, you have claim proof benefit. I need, I need the proof. Once I get the proof point in place, I am going to sell this like you've never seen before. I've, you know, you guys have seen me be incredibly lazy over the last decade. Well, I will step out of that for a moment to take advantage of the window that's up, opening up. And I will push this thing like you've never seen me push anything before. It'll be crazy. So in anybody that wants in on that, you know, it's, I, I don't really know how I'm going to do it. I may, this is, this is another thing. And again, this is me thinking as an opportunistic feeder. So you guys are getting to see how how I work. I'm thinking that, you know, my goal was always to get, uh, you know, thousands of people in the ACT program. I was just too lazy to do it. You know, I've put, I've put you know, over the last X amount of years, I've put, you know, probably a couple thousand people through. A lot of them are still with it. They just don't come on the calls. But I want like, you know, tens of thousands. That's why I'm going after trying to look, hook up and do a license agreement with Alignable. They've got 7 million members. You know, that will achieve my goal and I'll be happy. Hey, but, John. Yeah, Rick. John, I got a question. You made me think as you were describing this. Congratulations. That's a sounds like an awesome idea. I mean, geez. Yeah, you, yeah it, it's been out. in the process for a while. I'm, I'm sure. Um Regarding those leads, how how do you how do you determine the quality of those leads? So, for example, if if you're going to replace an SEO for a company and say, "I I give you a thousand leads," yeah. how do you know that those leads are specific for what the needs of that company are? Well, they're they're based on intent. They're they're absolutely purely based on intent. So the thing I don't know is I don't know how they're going to convert. So ultimately, mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, the short answer is I don't know the quality of them yet. Gotcha. Okay. I know how we're getting them. And the process of how we're getting them tells me they should be really good. Like, I can show you right now, they're currently just be being dumped into a spreadsheet. They're in, going into a Google Doc. So... If you if you look, they're full contact information. In some cases, they've got two email addresses. They've got a lot of them have phone numbers. This is this is not just jumbo accounts. This is real people. And if you look over here at uh, at column in, column in is the keyword that they entered the system. Like they went in and they were looking for Google marketing, and then they consumed at least two pages of content based off of that search before they qualified to get in here onto this list. And then before they're qualified to be added to the list, they're scrubbed against a blacklist database. They're scrubbed against validating that the email address is real. There's no hard bounces in this list. So 
as far as that kind of quality, I've done every possible thing I could to make sure these are real and they're good, but I don't know their convertibility. That's the piece. I don't know, like, I don't know how to base their level of intent. I could say, you know, maybe they have to look at more pages before I qualify them. But right now it's two. And you'll see, like, these started on Monday, on the 25th. And they're they're coming in like like one right after another. Like these are these are minutes. Like there was four, five, six, seven per minute flowing in. Like this is like a fire hose. And basically, by the time I woke up, this was 726. By the time I woke up, I had I had 635. The first one was a bogus one I added just to test. But 635 leads by the time, well, actually, that wasn't even when I woke up. That was when I turned the thing off. So just within a few hour time frame. And then I decided, okay, I, I need to slow the jets here. So I cut it back to 50 leads per day. So you'll see on the 27th, there's 50 on the 28th, there's 50 and it starts about one o'clock or, or one twenty-four in the morning. And you can see from one twenty-four on the, on the 28th. Yeah. So right here, one twenty-four on the 28th to one twenty-eight. So in 14 minutes, it got 50 new fresh leads. So today, this is the 29th, again, 114, two minutes. By 116, it had 50 fresh leads. This oh, thing, that fish. This is like unimaginable. The other thing, notice what I changed here. On today's leads, I pretty much wanted SEO software. I got more specific. These are all leads of people that are looking for SEO software. Mm -hmm. What do you think my odds of selling them site pop would be? I almost guarantee you they've never seen anything like that before. So this this thing is I don't even know what to call it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even sure what what to say about it. But uh it's an incredible system. Now the other thing what I'm thinking about is this is, it's impossible to really follow up on that kind of horsepower. I mean, you'd have to have an army of people to follow up on that. But I had a meeting this morning with the board at Kartra. And I've had a little bit of a problem lately with somebody sticking a thorn in my side. Because you guys know I've, I love Kartra. I try and get people pushed to Kartra because I believe in it. There's another thing out there called Go High Level. And every time I turn around, I've got these high-end influencers pushing people into Go High Level. I, I don't like Go High Level. I've looked at it. I just think there's stuff about it that is not as good as Kartra. So, but they I'm not going to say they're better marketers than I am. They're far more aggressive marketers than I am. They're far less lazy than I am. And they're doing a full press, full court press on moving people into go high level. And, you know, I don't get emotional about stuff most time, but under the hood, it pisses me off. <laughs> so I'm trying to get on board with Kartra and convince them in some way to integrate this system into lead gen, piping it right into Kartra for automated follow-up. So we're working on the API system in Kartra. My developers are connecting the two, whether Kartra likes it or not. They're, they're doing that for me. And I talked to Kartra about it this morning. And I said, I said, I get that you are scared to death of what I might do because they are very protective of their mail system. 
but I assured them I'm not going to harm their mail system. I'm going to pipe these cold leads into a third-party mail system. That third-party mail system will send out an email inviting the person for more information. Then they will go to a Kartra opt-in page. Then they will come a viable lead inside Kartra that I can follow up with. They'll get a, a tag put based on the keyword they came through for. So I'll know their intent, their interests. And then I can drop them into an automated follow-up sequence. And so I'm going to do that for myself. What I'm trying to convince Kartra of is to put this in as a third-party integration. So I could basically now recruit people and say, if you want the full system automated, all you need is a Kartra account. I'll get the $40 commission fee for bringing people in to Kartra through my affiliate link. So everyone that I sell the system to, there's a high probability that I'm going to add $40 a month to my income. And who do you think is going to stop doing this? So that means forever. Again, another layer of my thought process is if I want people in the ACT program so I can help them develop their marketing, why not have it to where the only way they can get access to the software is if they're an active Dominator member? I may actually have it included in the Dominator membership, and that might be the only way you can get it because it gives me control over a massive group of people. If I get 10 million people that want to purchase leads and I've got them all encapsulated in my membership site, I've got their ears. That puts me in control of a massive buying populace. Remember, I've told you guys the story a million times about the, the maternity dress, just figuring out what they needed and just handing it to them every step of the way so they don't even have to think about it. I already do that on a little tiny fractional way. But this would take that little tiny fractional way and it would give me tens of millions of pregnant women to sell shit to. Not really pregnant women, just a metaphor. Just what you want. Just what I want. <laughs> yeah. John, if you have just what I have... want. Richard, I want to impregnate 10 million women. <laughs> a marketer's dream come true, right? That's going to keep you way too busy and it'll going to tire you way too much. It's but if it's if it's required that they be a, a member of dominators to even get access to it, how does anybody else other than you be able to sell this? I would, I would actually be able to sell it very easily. Wouldn't through, you do it through affiliation? Yeah, exactly. The same way I sell site pop. I guarantee you every marketer on the planet will put me on a webinar to sell this if they get a commission off it. I guarantee that. It'll be the easiest thing I've ever done. I'll give you a perfect example. Some of the top marketers like Perry Belcher, Todd Brown, uh, Rich Sheffron. These guys, you know, I have all their contact information. We know each other. We talk. But if I were to reach out to any one of them via a text, let's say, they'll all get back to me. It might take a week or so. Typically, it's not, it's not right away. And when I sent them out the idea of buying $2 leads, every one of them replied to the text within 30 seconds. Oh, that's how top of mind this is. And every one of them is like, holy shit, what have you done? <laughs> so, you know, again, I, I am just hoping that these are convertible leads. And again, I've got like, like Damien from uh, Go Mobile Solutions. I don't know if any of you guys know him. His team is foaming at the mouth right now. They're I'm piping leads into them right now as we speak, and they're cold calling them. They've got guys on the team that they have a cold call crew, and they're cold calling these phone numbers. 
to measure the, you know, the level of interest. So very soon I will know what kind of tiger I have by the tail here. But uh, I don't know if I've got a full-blown cat or just a cub. <laughs> but either way, the marketability of this, even at cub level, for a $2 lead, even if one out of 100 convert, that's still a fraction of what you could purchase those leads for. And it's an absolutely scalable way to grow any business. Because as you guys know, with marketing, your amount of sales is directly in proportion to the amount of leads and follow-up you get. And the leads are the front end of the funnel. If you get no leads, there's no chance to follow up and there's no chance of sales. So the leads is literally the, the bottleneck. It is the absolute bottleneck to every business. Everything else, you can sharpen the sword. Once you get a lead, you can, you can sharpen the sword on your conversion. You can get better at sales. You can do all these things to increase your profitability. But if you don't have that initial choke point, you're done. You don't have a chance. You can't sharpen anything. You might as well cut the blade off the sword and just carry it around because it looks good. So, and and Roger, you know the you know how difficult it is buying leads for your business. This uh, could be a problem. This okay. is okay. This is based on search intent. Anybody that runs a search on Google, I will be able to follow them home for you. All right. Check. Yeah. I just sent you a message, John, with my keywords. Not a problem. Really? <laughs> yes. All right. The only thing the data provider has told me is the data provider says they won't do anything illegal. But as long as it's legal, we don't do good. anything illegal. I get that. No, I know. It's questionable. Like if you go into an ad network, anything questionable is off the table. There's a big difference between questionable and illegal, right? It's This is not based on morality. This is based on legality. Yeah, I hate that term questionable, though, because like we're classified with anybody that talks about CBD benefits, right? Or something like yeah, that. I, I mean... And when I, when I said questionable, I didn't mean it was like CD. I, I mean like questionable in the, in the eyes of an ad network. Like yeah. they're thinking, are we going to get in trouble for this? Yeah. Do we want to be associated with that? That's what I mean by questionable. They're questioning it. It doesn't mean it's bad. It just means, you know, it's their point of view. But this would be green lighted. Absolutely. What they sound. All right, cool. Yeah. Yeah. Not a problem. <laughs> So I think I just solved a lot of people's problems here. I mean, the choke point, that's been the biggest problem for most people. Most business owners, that's the choke point. How do we get leads? And, you know, here, basically up to now, what you had to do is you had to get traffic and then you had to have a big idea. And then you had to be able to get them to, to follow that and take an action. But here you can just buy them. You can just sidestep all of that. John, aren't you, um, <clears throat> if they doing their search on Google and you're following them home, haven't you just thrown a big rock at that dragon? Because you're doing what Google is charging for and you're charging less. <laughs> I've, I'm not really throwing a rock at the dragon. I'm working in conjunction with the dragon. I'm just using his information. I'm riding his coattails. I'm not doing anything against Google's terms of service. In fact, I would probably be able to do this in the tune of hundreds of millions of dollars before they even noticed it. Because I'm not pulling their data. I'm just looking at I'm just looking at user behavior. Of the personal people I know that are the obscenely wealthy. Yeah, I do know the guy that had a wire business. And when these new things called supermarkets came in and people didn't have baskets to put the food in, he created a cart with wheels on it out of his wire. 
and solved that problem. So there are those kind of people, but almost half of them are all people that didn't do anything except, ooh, there's a train going down the track and they hooked their caboose to the back end of it and just rode that son of a bitch. And that sounds like what you're doing. That's exactly what I'm doing. I have, I have identified a window of opportunity that just opened. Just like I identified the, the window of opportunity that was called the internet that nobody knew about at the time. You know, so that's, it's nothing different. I'm just doing what I've always done. If there's a better opportunity, I will shift gears at the speed of light. You, I, I don't need to be convinced. I don't need to be knocked over the head. My head's fairly soft. It doesn't like to get banged hard. <laughs> so I go with the flow. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm like lightning. I will take the path of least resistance to get to ground, which allows me to be incredibly lazy. So, and like I've always said, you know, anytime that I move from one thing to the next, I have to come out of the laziness for a minute because there's work to be done. And I don't mind doing that. I will work my ass off for a short period of time to ride the wave for the rest of my life. That's not a, not a question. Hey, John. Yes. Yeah, true. I, it doesn't sound like laziness to me. It sounds like you're living a life of a, a life of ease and flow. Yeah, and 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 I always have. Yeah, I've never like one of the things my dad taught me a lot of stuff that I didn't get at the time when he was doing it. But one of the things he told me, he says, if you're doing something and it's difficult, you're not doing it right. Just plain and simple. If anything is hard, you just are not doing it right. And what he told me, he said, if, if you're not doing it right and you don't know how to do it right, just ask somebody that does. He said, it's not hard. But somebody knows how to do what you want to do. And you can just ask them if they won't tell you, just observe what they're doing and you can figure it out. That was, you know, that was what I was told early on. And he was right on the money. Anytime I've ever tried something that was difficult, I realized real quick that, hey, I just don't know how to do this. So I'm going to stop trying until I either figure it out and it becomes easy or I find somebody that can just make it easy for me. You know, it's like programming. Programming is very, very difficult and hard for me because I just don't know how to do it, nor do I want to learn. So I just find somebody that does it and the problem solved. It's easy now. Right? I'm not going to fight it. I'm not going to spend the next 10 years trying to learn programming that's a moving target. It's going to change every time my feet move. No way. Let somebody else that likes a difficult life do that. They love it. They love it. And you can just pay them to do what they love. Why not? But the, uh, the one problem, I just wanted to point this out too. The biggest hurdle that I can see in all of this is going to be the, the idea of going again under the radar. Like people are not going to like the fact that you follow them around. It's creepy, right? That's going to be my biggest hurdle. And I discussed that with the Karcher guys this morning. They wanted to know, how are you going to get over that? Cause you know, yeah, how are you going to get over that? <laughs> very easily. Chat GPT is getting over it for me. Like I go in, like, let's say software, SEO software is a keyword that I've identified people that are looking for that. So I don't go in and say, hey, you know, thanks for visiting our site or anything like that. I can use one of Perry's famous lines, the way he sold a gazillion things about biting your fingernails. He just kept showing up with still biting your nails as the subject line. And eventually they bought. So how about still need SEO software? You don't coax out the problem? Because biting your fingernails is a problem, right? It is, but SEO software is a solution. So it's the same thing. Whether it's a problem or a solution, it's whatever they're focused on. Like Perry wasn't selling the solution because it wasn't part of their focus. 
their focus was just the problem. I've got people here that are- yeah, but he had a solution. He wouldn't have coaxed at that problem without one. He did. And I have the solution too, but I'm just taking a different flow. If you look in the ACT program, the pyramid of awareness, the pyramid of awareness starts at the bottom where they're unaware. It's a much bigger pot to pull from, but then you have to make them aware of the problem, which he did. He made them aware of the problem of biting their nails. That was his sell point. That was his choke point to introduce them to the solution. And he did it with the subject line of still, still biting your nails. He's poking at the problem. So I don't have to poke at the problem. They're already higher in the pyramid. They're in the solution aware part of the pyramid. They're aware that the solution is the SEO software, the automation, getting it and out. That's of based period. on the response that you got. Correct. Because I've identified them as actually looking for SEO software. So I know they're in the part of the pyramid where they're solution aware. They already know what the solution is. So I'm going to intersect them there. Now, there's not as many people there. There's a way larger amount of people that don't know there's SEO software. I could attack them there, but it's a much harder thing to do. And I'm going to take the easy way out. I'm going for the ones that already know what they want, and I'm just going to pop in there and say, here I am. It's like mind reading. I'm going to show up as their perfect solution. Path of least resistance. Makes me be lazy. Allows me. I'm going to say allows me to be lazy. It's also the path of uh, least sales resistance. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So it's it's close to the top. Like the top of the pyramid, the only thing above solution aware is product aware. So all I have to do is I just have to move them from solution aware to product aware. So I'll get them to bite on still need SEO software. Yes, I do. And then I'll take them into the, the product aware. Here's a product that solves your problem. And bang, I'm so close to the sale. I don't have to work very hard. My funnel How short. Short. Well, How you, you know, John, it out? if you set it up with us right, you're at the top of the network of everything that we're selling. And you could we could actually set ourselves up in our chosen field, and you could be the godfather and uh and get all the income streams from all our little clicks. Yeah, that's pretty much correct. I will be the kingpin. Well, we should, you should do an investment company. We should throw in cash with you. <laughs> well, remember, remember what I said. Like, if I'm going to be involved in something, I'm not going into something where I'm going to be a peon. That has never happened. In my entire life, I have never entered into anything that anyone could do. To me, if it's an opportunity, it's an opportunity that I'm going to have specialized knowledge that very few have. That's what's of interest to me. Always has been. I have never entered into anything where I was going to be one of many. If I'm going in, it's I'm going to be either the only one or one of a very few. I don't swim in bloody water. Never have, never had any interest in that. That's where the sharks come and eat you. <laughs> I want clean, clear blue water with no risk. No competition. I can lounge in the sun and float and sleep. <laughs> That's my way of life. <laughs> okay, John, how much longer before this you put the you release this into the wild? I well, like I said. Any of you guys that signed up for the beta test, you are going to get the first crack at it when it's ready. I'm not sure we're moving it from a staging server right now to a live server because I'm I'm convinced like the team I met with them yesterday. We've got one more meeting on Monday morning. And the only thing is whether they want to go live and still continue testing with the Kartra API. Because basically for me to sell it, I want it connected to Kartra and I want it using the Kartra affiliate program and all that. 
no matter how you slice it, no matter how I wind up doing this. <clears throat> I, I really was considering just having it be part of the ACT program and be within that. Only members have access to it. But uh, I, I'm not sure if I'm going to take that approach or not. I haven't, haven't really decided. It's it's all very fresh and very exciting. And, you know, like a lot of you might be shocked to hear that I cut my SEO team after 20 something years. That might be very shocking to you. And the whole idea that I dropped that thing like a bad habit. As soon as I was in position, I realized I can't do everything. And if I see a better opportunity, remember what I tell you guys, I, I've told you guys this continuously for the last 10 years, as you look at your buckets of opportunity and you grab the most profitable one and you just forget everything else on the table. When you get that one up and running and it's profitable, then you can take a step back and look and decide if you want to clone it. Do you have enough money? Is your life good? Have you accomplished your goal? If not, you clone it and just get another income stream. So with this one, there's a lot of stuff that got cut. Remember, like every year, December, I always do the process with you guys to look at the last 12 months and evaluate what were the things that you did that were working? What were the things that you did that weren't working and just took up your time and kept you from being successful? And and that's what I did. I just didn't wait till the end of the year. I told you guys, you don't have to wait till the end of the year to do this. You could do this weekly. You could do it monthly. You could do it whenever it makes sense. It's a process. And I just used it again. I didn't wait. Usually I wait till the end of the year and I'm so lazy. I usually only do it for you guys' benefit. I rarely do it on my own because, you know, I've... <clears throat> I've always really been at a level where there's really nothing I want, you know? And at, at this point, it's like, I don't really even need to want this. It's just too big of an opportunity laid at my feet to not take advantage of it. You know, it's, it's like, I am an opportunistic feeder and you know, this is, this is just too easy. So you say that like it's a bad thing. <laughs> I did, didn't I? I'm, I'm kind of, uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's got a lot of, a lot of mixed feelings. Believe me. I think you might be the uh, reluctant uh, sales pro. I'm definitely reluctant. That's for sure. Whatever I am behind that, it's. <laughs> See, I, I, I get where Woody's coming from. Like you've chummed the water. We're there. Yeah. No, Linda, I, you call me after this meeting, Linda. <laughs> you got it. Let's go to work. <laughs> well, believe me, I've I've been busier, you know, since I think it's since Perry's AI event. Perry's AI event really put a fire under me. And I think that was in April, March or April. I, you know, he was pointing me out. He kept, he kept referring to me out of a crowd. He had like, I don't know, like 400 people in the crowd. And it was like the who's who of internet marketing. It was people I hadn't seen in a decade that just came out of the woodwork for Perry's event. It was because of his marketing. He's a spectacular marketer. I mean, he oversells stuff like crazy. And everybody came out of the woodwork for that event. But as he was up there and he was, you know, doing his thing from stage, he literally called me out like, like, I think it was like seven times referring to me as somebody that is already doing what he's talking about. And I wasn't sure what he was talking about. I'm like, really? And then I, I, I realized, you know, because he was talking about robotics and AI. And, and all this stuff. And I didn't recognize that that is what I've been doing for a long time. I just didn't get it. It's like SEO. When I started doing SEO, I didn't know what to call it. Nobody did. I was, I just did it. And then, you know, finally it got pointed out what it was that I was doing. And with Perry, I'm like, 
holy shit, again, I'm almost a decade ahead of his curve. Why not take advantage of that momentum? And that really is kind of, I think what, what sparked me is looking at, okay, there's a, there's a bunch of opportunity that I'm not reticularly activated to see right now. That's all it's wrapping me. I just wasn't seeing it. And I got to tell you, once I became reticularly activated to see it, it's like, holy shit, I'm, I'm literally swimming in opportunity right here. So that's where I, you know, I took a turn. I refocused my teams. I said, you know, this is what I need built. And I told them exactly what I needed, exactly how it worked. And, you know, again, I'm not learning programming. I'm like, this is what it has to do. This is what I want. You guys figure it out. If you can't figure it out, I'll accept that as a, as an answer, but they figured it out. So I'm accepting that as an answer as well. It creates a problem for me because now, okay, shit, now I got to do something with it. And uh, again, it's just, it's just shifting gears. It's shifting gears to take advantage of an opportunity. There's That's a what lot they call of, Rolls Royce problem rather than beat up Volkswagen problem. Yeah. And there, there's a lot of these opportunities right now. There's opportunities. There's massive opportunities in blockchain. There's massive opportunities in AI. And there's massive opportunities in quantum computing. The quantum computing, I don't get. That's not my thing. I know there's opportunity in it. I'm not activated to see it because I don't understand it really other than from a top level. But the AI, I totally get that one. I totally get the blockchain. And those two are, have where my focus has been. Like my focus has been on the blockchain for the last couple of years. I don't normally talk about it in this group because it's not our focus. You know, I have a different group of people that are interested in that. And I, I talk to them over there about it. But the, uh, the AI is, you know, that's kind of my new toy. Even though I've been playing with it for over a decade, you know, site pop is all about robotic AI. It's, it's, automating processes that's using artificial intelligence it's using it to manipulate google's artificial intelligence it's what it is and again it's just like me doing seo before i knew what it was i knew how to do it i just didn't know what to call it perry basically shined a light on hey here's the guy that's been doing this longer than any of us and i'm just like i had no idea I just literally did not recognize it. But again, I think that was the thing that just kind of threw the spark that ignited the fire to take me somewhere I didn't think I was going. Didn't, you know, this stuff was just not even on my radar. But piecing it together, the whole idea of solving the problem of the bottleneck of lead generation, that's what everybody's always wanted. It's been lead generation. It wasn't SEO. Like I've told you many, many times, nobody really wants SEO. It's hard to get somebody to pay for something they don't want. They want the outcome of SEO. They want to be seen. They want to not be hidden. They want to get the leads. They want to be in front of somebody when they're searching for them. But all for the point of, remember I say, what do they want? Why do they want it? If anybody wants SEO, the reason they want it is the leads. They want the lead generation. And again, ask the same question. Why do they want that? They want their funnels full. Why do they want that? They want more sales. Why do they want that? They want to make more money. Why do they want that? Is it a male? It's for significance. If it's a female, it's for security. Boom. End of story. It's that simple. You know, it's like my dad said, if it's difficult, you're not doing it right. Maybe you don't understand it. Find somebody that does. And the problem. So. Were you concerned about uh, the vendors that we're selling to can figure it out? And No. I, I mean, anybody can figure this out, Woody. But it's like my SEO software, SitePop. 
everybody told me, aren't you afraid that others are going to do it? I came out with that in 2011. It's it's 2023 right now, and no one has anything like it. Why would I go rebuild a second bridge across the river next to the one that's already there? Just get on the bridge, go over it, and get the result. Yeah. Well, people don't yeah. want to pay the two bucks, that's why. Well, here, here's the other thing, Woody. Not to, say, not to say that they haven't tried. There's been a lot of companies that came out with a similar thing to what Site Pop is, but every one of them got their clients banned because they weren't operating in the in the in the realm of bandwidth that I operate in. It's always whenever I do something in the SEO world, it's always stay in the cloud, stay in the cloud cover. You know, keep off the radar. Everything has to be done naturally. And these guys, you know, they don't want to build a network out because that's too big of an ominous project. They want to pipe all the stuff through a proxy server and generate all this, all the things from one source, which that's not natural. That's just going to get you in trouble. So there, I can't say there hasn't been companies. There's probably a dozen people have tried to build something similar and they all just got wiped out. For me, that causes an issue because now I've got people that are looking at mine and they have preconceived objections. You know, that's the only problem it causes for me. And then I have to explain, no, I'm not an idiot. I didn't do what they did. I'm not going to put you in jeopardy. I've never put anybody in jeopardy. That's not my job. I'm here to protect you, not get you annihilated. And that's the way I've always done it. Those big companies, they hired me as a mercenary to protect them and get them done what they what they needed done. So it was never to put them in harm's way. If you talk to anybody that's been in SEO for any length of time, they've almost all, if not all of them, have had sites banned, client sites you get a client site ban, you're going to have a very bad conversation. And it's probably going to lead to legality because you, you harmed their business, whether it was intentional or not. And in my track record over all these years, I have never, not once, not ever had a client site banned. Ever. I have had some of my own personal sites banned because I pushed them to the edges to see where the edges were. Only for to identify what I could get away with and what I couldn't, so I could keep everyone else out of harm's way. But a client site, never, ever have I had a client site banned or put in jeopardy in any way. Could I have your two-minute pitch of this whole thing wrapped up? <laughs> of, the, of the lead generation? of this system i i honestly woody i haven't even got that far yet the limbacker special i am still trying to figure out what kind of tiger i have by the tail here and and i can tell you this the pitch won't come from me anyway the pitch will come from chat gpt and what's going to come from me is the prompt to get it and i will definitely share that with you like the prompting the, the prompting is getting me absolutely incredible results, the way that I'm doing the prompting. And for those of you, this is another benefit. This is something I'll share with you guys. I've just been working on it here the last, the last day. And let me see here. Let me see where I've got it. Okay, so this in the ACT program, I'm, I'm kind of redoing. I'm redoing the whole pitch for ACT. I'll take you, take you to the top here. So I've got the same thing. You know, it's about wanting a predictable way to get new customers. Big idea, get more, get more customers fast using an ad agency secret. We call the ACT method. If you, even if you have no budget or technical skills. So the thing that I added here, actually, I have to refresh to even get the addition. Okay, so... So here's what I added, all new in 2023, AI automation makes building a profitable funnel even easier. So I'm adding in AI training into this. 
and we'll get down here to the the added benefits. So these are these are going to be exclusive bonuses for our members, and we've got the uh, you know the deal through Zoom for twelve ninety nine. This is another software that we're about to release called the Act Imager, and it's kind of like a cross between Stable Diffusion, Mid Journey. It's basically a, an AI program to generate graphics. So we're going to include that, and we're going to allow branded versions for our resellers. So our resellers will be able to sell this program to their customers and make profit from it. The, uh, the Dominator AI agency, this is a thing. And again, this is another one, branded version for resellers. So they will be able to brand this and sell this out to their customers. And it's basically, it's, a, it's an encapsulated program that takes ACT and puts it into play to create marketing funnels. Like you fill in the blanks and it uses the AI to create an entire marketing campaign. Um, we're going to have the reseller upgrade for anybody that wants to upgrade from the normal ACT membership to the reseller ACT membership and get all this branded stuff. But a, a chat bot, like this will this will allow you to literally build a, a chat widget that's just like chat GPT and put it on your site for your customers to play with without paying for JetGBT. You can have them opt in. It could be a lead generator for you. And here's the lead generation system, the guaranteed leads for under two bucks. So I've, I'm working on this. This one here is really cool. This is Prompt Engine Pro. I basically bought a, a master resell of this software program. And again, I can give it branded versions for resellers. But what this program is, it's an override. It's like a it's like a layer over the top of chat GPT, but it has all the prompts built in for you. So you could search prompts for anything you want to do. You can click buttons and have it create the prompt for you, basically the same way that I'm creating them. You know, you can put the the tone in there, the length in there, the a whole bunch of stuff just by pointing and clicking on buttons to create your own custom prompts. It's a really cool piece of software. This is all going to be benefits of, of what you get inside the ACT membership. And I believe that when I put this out to all the people that have dropped out over the years, they don't get access to this now because they dropped out. And I'm I'm kind of waffling back and forth between whether I'm going to let them back in for the 29 bucks or they have to buy in to get back in because they dropped out. I, I Normally, I don't penalize people, but I'm warming up to it. <laughs> I'm, I'm more I'm literally warming up to that idea. <laughs> So I, I just I just don't know. There's a lot of stuff I just don't know. It's really not about the money at, at this point. It's really not about the money for me. It's it's sometimes about the idea of the lesson. You know, why would you drop out of something that you're getting so much value from for 29 bucks? Right. It's the cheap life insurance policy that you should just have for life because it's going to keep on giving. Any of you guys that have been in here and been with me for any length of time, you know, I never charge people more for stuff. I always just keep giving, giving, giving for anybody that stays in the membership. That's the value of it. So do I want to give people the opportunity to just like come and go as they please? Just come back, you know, when there's something cool? I don't, I don't know. I don't think so. So I'm, I'm warming up to that idea. But I think, I think John Frank Kern took that took that away from his inner circle that if you if you leave you can't get back in on a deal anymore. For the yeah. Deal. yeah, yeah. So I've removed all of the get back in for twenty nine ninety seven now, and it's basically anybody coming back in it's four ninety seven. This also is going to give you guys a big opportunity for telling people about this and getting them in because you get half of that four ninety seven. And then you get 25% of the back end too. 
So any of you that know people that could benefit from any of this stuff, like if you're a reseller, I mean, just take the stuff and rebrand it and sell it direct and make more money. But if you, you know, if you're not a marketer, you're not a reseller, you're not serving small businesses, uh, just send them over here. I know you all know people that could use this. Anybody that's a business owner could get huge benefit from this. So why not send them over and make yourself a recurring income stream? You know, it's a no-brainer. So I, th I think that's uh, that's pretty much a no-brainer. Oh, geez, I almost forgot about this. Do we still have? Uh, let me see. Is that you, John? That is not me. <laughs> Uh, oh, there you are, Jeffrey. I apologize. I meant to hit this much sooner. I I had it up in my window. So no worries. So anyway, Jeff made this, and I don't know. You want to tell us what what this is? Uh, this is a an AI generated ad, a promo for our uh, AI for CEOs series. Okay, we're doing an cool. executive summary, summary series. Cool. So we're going to look at this and then uh, give it a critique. So that's a minute and two seconds. Here we go. The tsunami of AI tools makes leading more like big wave surfing. Losing balance could be fatal. As CEO, you're asking business questions about what gets results, the risks, and how to scale, but... Too often, geek speak from experts feels like you've walked into a cartoon world with a made-up language. You're ready to be the leader of your team, your customers, your family deserve. Creating a clear, safe path into a prosperous future, yeah. getting results. But too often, your meetings feel like a three-ring circus filled with clowns showing off tech without results. The race is on. You need a pit crew, the right team to get into the winner's circle. Grab AI by the circuits and make it work for you. Join other entrepreneurs, boldly leading their teams, destroying myths of what's impossible. The AI Executive Summary, CEO to CEO in the language of leadership, what works today, case examples, hot seat interviews, answering your questions. Do you qualify to participate? Find out today. Click the link below. That's pretty cool. Really cool. That is really cool. Um, I th I think you you're definitely carrying a sword here. So let's let's talk about how we sharpen the sword. And I think that's that's what you were looking for, right, Jeff? <laughs> yes, indeed. Okay, so it, ne it needs to be you know sanity checked and shredded. Yeah, no, 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 it's 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 really cool. I mean, it's awesome that you've taken the initiative to to even start the process. And that was pretty cool. I mean, a lot of that stuff, the thing was you hit a lot of things and some of them were really strong and some of them were just kind of there. And uh, you hit on a lot of features, but I didn't hear any benefits. So I think if you just kind of twist the script and, and use the WizGat thing. Whatever you're going to say, follow it up with what's so good about that. And it doesn't have to be long. Like you can literally hit the thing and then say why they want it. And I think that would just make that a hundredfold more powerful. The visuals, everything is, is just really cool. I love the, uh, the Spaceman guy. It totally reminded me of the crypto commercial where it said the uh, fortune favors the brave. That is the, you know, but again, it's, it's all about the, the words. It's about the communication. You have to communicate the value and benefits. It's like, it's like, uh, what do they say? Um, features tell and stories sell or whatever it is. Well, it's, it's the same thing. The features tell, but the benefits are what sell. And you need a, you need like a call to action on the end of it. Again, that's benefit oriented. 
like get free access or, or, you know, get the details, something that's going to benefit them of, of, you know, what it's going to do for them, why they want it. Like Frank Kern always used that simple formula when he came to his call to action. It's here's what I've got. Here's what it's going to do for you. Here's what I want you to do next. Super short, super to the point, very, very high power. You know, and what you say is like, here's what I want you to do next is just click the button below, put in your name and email, and, you know, the the saga will continue or you know, however you're going to mold that into the storyline. But you might have too many. I would I would prefer to see like each one of your characters there. They were all cool. You know, like the clown, you know, feels like a circus. All that stuff was really cool. But I think you might just have too many of them for one thing. Like, like maybe split that into two, have two different ones, even if it's a little shorter, have two variations of it. And then, you know, maybe turn the two into 10 and then split test it and see, okay, well, the, the top converting ones all have these elements in common. The bottom converting ones have all these elements in common. And then you know what to start stripping out for your next set of tests. Because you've got, you know, what, like 10 or 12 different scenes in there. So if you if you split test that, you can kind of figure out, okay, which variations convert better, which ones are on the bottom of the rung, and see if there's any commonality. But the I think fidelity wasn't very good. I I couldn't hear it really. Yeah, that could have been just from the zoom thing, because it was it was coming through fine on my side. I think the, the volume yeah. is fine. Zoom suppressed a lot of the sound. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's really cool. You can tell it's AI. You can tell it's like, you know, new generation stuff. So that puts them on the cutting edge, but just beef up the benefits. Like each slide, I think each one that comes up, each character should, should say the thing, whatever it is, but then, just pop the benefit on the end. Doesn't have to go into detail. But that you you really need to pump the benefits. That would be my my recommendation. How easy would it be to do that? Pretty easy. Yeah, extremely easy. Because okay. um I used runway ml to generate the 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 video and um 11 labs to do the voiceover. So, and cool. now, because yesterday I cut a piece of that out to use as the intro for my podcast segment. <laughs> that is awesome. relevant. So I took the the race car driver, the, the two pieces, the race car driver and the grab AI by the circuits. Yeah. And, sure. and use that so, and change the, so it just took seconds. Yeah. So after I've gone through the process now, it just takes seconds because those are nine scenes stitched together in a video editor. Yeah, I don't remember offhand if the race car driver was the last scene before the the uh, the ending. No, it's kind of in the middle. It's where it drags. I mean, I know where I think it drags, and wanted to, to hear you know from get feedback on. Well, what what I was thinking is the race car segment is the perfect segment to go into the call to action. Like even if you even if you stated yeah. on your last screen, you were basically stating what all is included, which again is that's a list of features. Features. Yep. I would I would potentially trade that out with benefits with a list of benefits or a list of combination feature benefit. Like here's what it is, here's why you want it, and and have those come up one at a time. Like you had it like in the Star Wars theme of like scrolling and you got a lot of shit on the screen at one time. I would fade the one in, the one out, and then the next one in, the next one out, and then the call, the ultimately the call to action. And it might be, you might find that you do that then and then the race car driver, and it's going to take a team, you know, you're going to need a pit crew. Here you go. I'm handing you the pit crew on a silver platter. Let's go click the button. Boom, out. 
because you really want to end it with a strong call to action. Not like you, like it seemed like credits. Yeah. So turn, turn the credits into benefits and then go into the race car driver. You got to have a pit crew. I'm handing it to you on a silver platter. Click the button and let's, let's drive. <laughs> let's ride, you know, whatever, whatever it happens to be. Super. That, that would be my, my best, best recommendation for you. Appreciate it. It helps yeah. a lot. Yeah. Awesome. Absolutely. Let's see if I got any other cool. So I, I had a lot of stuff to share with you guys today. Pretty, pretty exciting stuff. Oh, here's one. You know, we've been talking a lot about prompts and, and all that stuff. And several people have been like hitting me up for like, how do you do these prompts? And I'm like, I just, it's, it's just nothing more than a spew. It's just a data dump. Like, you know, when I got those 600, 600 leads, I'm like, holy shit, we got to send these people something. So since it was an SEO software, here's the prompt. I'll share the prompt with you to create the email that those people are going to get. And it says, you are an SEO specialist, also known as search engine optimization specialist. So I'm giving it the acronym, but I'm also defining what the acronym means. Again, clear communication between you and the machine. You have created a new innovative SEO software tool. And remember, this isn't pushing the lead gen. This is pushing the SEO software that we're generating the leads for. So you have created a new innovative SEO software tool that sends search signals into the major search engines. These search signals train their AI that is working to figure out who belongs at the top of the ranking. So I'm giving it I'm giving it a framework of what it is I'm selling, what it does, why they want it, all that stuff. These signals force websites to the top of the search results. This tool can be used by website owners, affiliate marketers, even agencies looking to rank their clients and offer organic website traffic services like search engine optimization. <clears throat> You have come to the realization from years of experience that the biggest frustration and hurdle for small businesses is their ability to generate high rankings in the search engines that bring highly qualified leads, traffic, and sales. Like normally, I would not write a sentence that is that long. That is a jumbo compound sentence. But since it's the AI, I don't have to worry about that. Like I said, this is purely just a data dump. I'm letting the AI figure out what I want. I'm just giving it everything. I don't have to worry if it's in order or, or whatever. If I say it twice, no big deal. Just the data dump. So with that in mind, you have developed this cutting edge SEO technology to help anyone get top rankings in the major search engines. Again, I've said that before, just in a different way. We all know that search engine traffic is the best, most high converting traffic available. Top listings or rankings and the major search engines can be a game changer in anyone's business. So I'm basically framing it with a lot of stuff that I want it to know when it's writing this copy. When prospects are searching for what you offer, it is the best time to show up in front of them. Again, I'm seeding it with the important things about what this thing does. Showing up at the top of the rankings gives you the highest chance of grabbing their attention and turning them into a customer by showing them how your product or service will deliver their desired outcome, give them exactly what they want. This is the ultimate dream come true scenario for small business owners as it delivers them the best leads on the planet to start creating a relationship with them to gain their trust, give them the desired outcome they're looking for, and turn them into a customer. It will be almost like you are reading their mind and magically showing up in front of them, like the, the forces of the universe are working to get them exactly what they want through the law of attraction. Now, based on all of this information, write me a short yet very compelling email to introduce this SEO tool to all of the people that are searching for a for and consuming content 
for the keyword page rank. Now, I put the keyword page rank in there because that's one of the keywords that I was collecting leads for, people that were looking for page rank. So I say it right here, people that are searching for and consuming content for the word page rank. The call to action is to see who wants to be a beta test or see who wants to beta test this new software. And as a bonus, they would receive beta test pricing and be able to lock it in for life. The call to action will be to click the link below and learn exactly how it works and get the opportunity to be a beta tester and be one of the first business owners to get access to this game-changing technology. That was my prompt. That's a massive prompt. Most people are not doing prompts like that. But when you look at the outcome, like the subject line, boost your page rank and dominate the search engines, limited beta testing opportunity. It's a pretty good headline. That's a good subject line that I think will probably get opened because it's using the keyword that they actually searched for. Boost your page rank. I guarantee you anybody that's searching for page rank is searching it to figure out how to boost it. So the, the AI figured that out. And then here it's opening with sympathy. Are you tired of struggling to reach the top of the search engine rankings? Do you dream of capturing highly qualified leads, increasing website traffic, and skyrocketing your sales? We understand the frustration that small businesses face when it comes to generating high rankings in the search engines and attracting the right audience. That's why I'm thrilled to introduce you to a groundbreaking SEO tool that will revol revolutionize the way you approach search engine optimization. Our cutting edge software developed after years of experience and research empowers you to send powerful search signals directly into major search engines, training their AI algorithms to recognize and prioritize your website. Imagine your website appearing at the very top of the search results precisely when your potential customers are actively searching for the products or services you offer. This is the moment of truth, the perfect opportunity to grab their attention and showcase how your business can fulfill their needs, deliver the desired outcome they crave. With our SEO tool, you can make this dream a reality. We've harnessed the forces of the universe using the law of attraction to bring together customers or actively seeking what you provide. By leveraging our software unique capabilities, you'll be amazed at how effortlessly you can establish relationships with these high quality leads, gaining their trust and turning them into loyal customers. I mean, this is fantastic copy. I don't know about you guys, but I not in a million years would come up with copy this good on my own. And here's the best part. We're offering you an exclusive chance to be amongst the first to beta test this game-changing technology. By clicking the link below, you'll discover exactly how our SEO tool works and secure your spot as a beta tester. Not only will you gain early access to this revolutionary software, but you'll also enjoy special beta pricing that you can lock in for life. And then it's got insert the link here this is an incredible opportunity to take your business to new heights. Don't miss out on being one of the pioneering business owners to experience the immense benefits of our SEO tool. Act now and let us help you dominate the search engines. Attract the right audience and fuel your growth like never before. That's some pretty damn good copy. And I don't think that I would have gotten anything close to that if I didn't do the prompt the way I did the prompt. So <clears throat> can you guys see the value in the prompting? I mean, I would have got, if I did, it's just like anything else, garbage in, garbage out. If I would have done just a simple two sentence prompt, I would not, I guarantee you, I would not have got that copy. I would have got exactly what I put into it. And, and remember, like, if you read my prompt, 
it looks like I'm a third grader doing a, a piss poor job on a, on a term paper, right? It's all over the place. It makes no sense, but everything I needed in there is in there. And I just let the AI sort it out, figure out what I mean. I just threw up on the page, clean it up, clean up the mess. You know, it's, it's like the, the guy at the circus following the elephant, scooping up his shit and cleaning up the, the venue. <laughs> That's what the AI is. All you have to do is get the elephant to take a dump. It will clean it up for you. If you don't do that, then the circus doesn't go on, right? Got to feed the elephant. Let him take a dump. <laughs> so... All right. Well, any you're so poet, you're John. You're so poetic. It's wonderful. I know. I think it's my old age. I'm just getting like <laughs> oh, everything is just just coming out on the table here. <laughs> That's what I'm going to attribute it to. I got to blame it on something, right? I, I can't come off and just say I'm that lewd, crude, and socially unacceptable and feel good about it. So we'll, we'll blame it on the old age. <laughs> so we're selling a package, a package that you put together, a system. Yes? In, yeah, in that, that software is basically, it could be used by just a business owner or it could be used by an agency to sell that service to business owners. So it's, it's SEO software. It could be used for, you know, for your own purpose, or it could be used for an agency providing services for clients. Most of our users are agencies. Like I would say 90% of, of the people that purchase that they're selling it as a service. And we give it to them at an unbelievable price too. We sell an agency a, a package of 50 projects for 200 bucks. So it's $4 a piece. So they could literally have 50 clients at a cost of $4 each per month. And they can sell that service for 100, 200, $300 a month. So if they sell it for just $100, they sell it for 97 bucks. Under 100 bucks, they're collecting $5,000 a month and it's costing them 200. It's very incentivized, high profit opportunity for resellers. So it's pretty cool stuff. And most of the agencies, they burn through the 50 and then they want another block of 50. <laughs> so they like profits. <laughs> I had I had some guy today that just bought it from a from one of the webinars I recently did, and he said I and I very rarely do I get a refund request, but I always offer you know the thirty day money back guarantee. He sent me an email this morning. He says you know I just can't sell this. He goes I've tried. I've reached out to my clients. They don't get it. You know I I, I regretfully want to ask for a refund because he says I love the product. I just can't sell it. And I'm like, hey, no problem. This definitely is not for everybody. And I'm just thinking, my God, if you can't sell this, how are you going to survive? If he doesn't know how to, like, I literally wrote the scripts and stuff for him to sell it. How, if you can't do that, I've really felt sorry for the guy. <laughs> I was like, holy shit. Pretty, pretty crazy. But, it's a training issue. <laughs> yeah, I don't really know what that issue was, but I don't think it was in the training. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anybody got anything else before we wrap up for today? I think we've. Hey, John. Yeah, Gwen. How's it going? Uh, it's a going. I was, I'm looking at redoing the website and reamp and marketing. And I'm like, wait a minute. Things are changing. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I'm probably going to need a call with you the, later. Yeah, but, no, um, no problem. The winds are shifting, that's for sure. Yes. 
But my, my question is, if we're a reseller, do we, if we want to beta test it as well, do we still need to sign up as a beta tester or do we yeah, get I, that as a reseller? Well, you, you get it anyway, but if you're signed up, you're going to get the first access when I first release it. Okay. Where do we find that on your site? Let me see. It's in the members area. Okay. I'll put the, I'll put the I'm link. in the... I'll just put okay. the link in the chat for you here. If I can find the chat. There it is. Okay. Now that's exciting because I was kind of getting bored with all the SEO going, well, everybody's uh, doing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, it really got to a bloody water tank with that, you know, toward the end. And it has been. It's been like that for several years, really. Yeah, it has. So it's, I was just so entrenched in it because I was doing the back end for so many different resellers and stuff that I probably stayed with it longer than I normally would have or should have. But I didn't have anything look at me at the, in the face like I do now. And it was very clear that, okay, my opportunity is here and now to, to make this shift. Uh-huh. Okay, and, cool. And I just did it fearlessly. <laughs> well, you got me excited again. So we'll, hopefully we can get more rolling. Well, cool. Yeah, Rustin should really dig this because, I mean, if... that's I was going to have him listen to the replay of this one. Yeah, selling $2 leads is like, you know, pretty much a, a no-brainer. Like, you might reach out back to all the uh, the diesel guys. In fact... It, are you going to SEMA this year? Um, I was going to ask you if you wanted to go. We're thinking about it. We got to make a decision before the 30th. Yeah. I mean, I I might go just to go. Uh huh. But I don't know that I will walk the show floor. I'm okay. Not, I'm not really interested in walking the show floor. <laughs> well, let me know if you want a ticket. But and and like but tomorrow. <laughs> like I said, I probably don't even need the ticket, but I might go and, you know, hang out with you guys on the outside of the event. Uh huh. Um, so if, if you decide to go, I probably will do that, but I don't need the ticket. I'm not going in. Okay. Okay. Right. Yeah. Cause I think they opened up the whole parking lot now for outsiders too. Yeah. Yeah. So no, my days of standing in long lines and waiting to walk a show floor, those days are <laughs> behind me. Okay. I'm I'm happy to like hang out with you guys after and help you sharpen your sword to go in for the next round and put you in battle, but uh, I'm going to stay off the battlefield myself. <laughs> well, that one's getting getting full also. They've got Google experts and people directly from Google training on on their yeah. meetings now so it's like well okay well, i bet <laughs> you they don't have two dollar leads probably not <laughs> but we can definitely i think that would be a big sale so yeah, yeah. That's, awesome okay that's i'll the, be in touch with you later today or tomorrow yeah that's the whole thing of you know like coming in with something that is fresh and new and nobody else has that's an incredible advantage like in SEMA, there's a lot of companies that are big established companies in there and they know darn good and well how much a lead costs. They're spending money to do pay-per-click programs and they're paying they're paying more than $2 for a click, let alone. Indubitably. They're, they could be paying literally hundreds of dollars for an actual lead. And, you know, when you go in with something and say, you know, hey, I can take that pain away from you. I can lower your lead costs by, you know, 80%. I think they're probably going to want to talk to you. You know, I mean, that opening question, hey, how, what do your leads typically cost you? What's, you know, what's a lead cost you for client acquisition? And if they tell you, oh, well, you know, it's like, you know, a hundred bucks. Well, how would you like it if I could lower you by 98%? They probably wouldn't <laughs> let you leave until you told them how you were going to do that. Yeah, that or they'd write you off as crazy, one of the two. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe you might not want to say 98%, but what if you said, hey, what if I can cut that in half? Would you be interested in the conversation? 
because you're not talking about something anyone else is saying. You're not coming in like the 10th SEO person saying, hey, you know, I'd love to do your SEO for you. And, you know, that conversation is dead. SEO right. is not dead, but that conversation is long gone. Right. Okay. Well, I'm going to see if I can get a meeting. I'll, I'll text you or email you about setting up a meeting or a call and we'll see oh, if we can get that figured out. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Appreciate it. Thank you, John. Sure. Okay. No problem. I so got something John, to say. If you um, go into that website it takes that you put in, it takes you to the ACT program, but I'm a, a member through Alignable. Yes, I'm going to actually put a form in there for all the Alignable people. So oh. look for that on Alignable. I'll, I'll actually post that in there for you. Oh, okay. Okay, good. Thank you. I, I just have to make another page that's outside of the membership to be able to do that. Okay. So not a problem. It's easy. I can just clone it and do it do it that way. So in fact, I'll put that in there for you today. I was going to do that anyway. Thank you. All right, Gregory, you had something? Yes, sir. Uh, before everybody disperses, happy 4th of July, safe passage, fun, have fun. Uh, don't get too close to the fireworks. Uh, <laughs> those who are local, the Los Alamitos uh, Navy, uh, was, a, was a Navy base, now a Joint uh, Forces training base, is having their 4th of July show on the 3rd, on Monday, not the 4th. So you'll be able to get two fireworks shows in one in one week. So on Monday the 3rd is the Los Alamitos fireworks. Gates open at 4 o'clock. Just need to have ID to get on base. And they have food court. They have uh, food trucks, the uh, rock and roll band, and lots of uh, military displays and photo ops to get pictures with aircraft and stuff. Oh, and cool. The fireworks go off at 9 o'clock. Yeah, that will probably actually be a double show because they're also doing it in the Alamitos uh, Bay, Alamitos oh. Harbor. They're setting up a, a a barge out there in the middle of Alamitos Marina. Wow. And they're going to fire the fireworks from there. So I'm probably going to wind up taking the boat down there and huh? you can take the boat. get right in the middle of it. <laughs> so cool. Happy cool Fourth, everyone. Stuff. Yeah, Thanks. absolutely. Happy Fourth. Guys, yeah. stay safe Good and clean and. John, I have a quick, quick question. Okay. All right. Let's say you're a guy like me, a Woody Blagman. You're all over the internet. You're making comments. You're making political comments, blah, blah, blah. And you want to take your name out of controversial conversations. Is there a scan or, or how do you do that? Well, you can do that with a character. You can, you can always create a character to represent your business. Like a perfect example of that is Eben Pagan. You know, he created the character called David D'Angelo. That was a fictional character. He was, his name, his true name was Eben Pagan. But he portrayed himself as David D'Angelo in his market. He sold dating advice. And I think what he realized was the name Eben wasn't really going to come off as somebody that was credible as a dating coach. So he made David D'Angelo, which is, you know, a much sexier name and, and put him in the arena of, you know, I'm a, I'm a sought after dating coach. And he did really well with that. Very few people knew that that was him. You know, they didn't know him as that. They just knew him as David D'Angelo. I didn't even know, like, his marketing was absolutely phenomenal. He was like one of the top marketers in the very beginning of, of creating online funnels. And his stuff just was spectacular. And it wasn't until I saw him at a, an actual marketing conference under the name Eben Pagan. I'm like, well, wait a minute. This guy, I've seen him before. And then I pieced the two together. I'm like, holy shit. That was just a fictional character he created. And uh, and Frank Kern, he did the same thing. I forget what the name was, but he created one for the dog training industry because he didn't want people looking up his name, seeing that, you know, he was an Internet marketer, not a dog trainer. So he created a fictional character. And online, if you look this character up online, it's a 
you know, a highly accredited dog trainer. So it's just, it's creating a, a new persona. And, you know, it's not illegal. People do it all the time. They have a, a writing name, like actors will create a stage name. It's not their real name. It's not illegal. It's just in this world, here's here's my character. Here's my identity. So screen actors are actually required. No two actors can have the same name, so they have to make up names. Yeah, yeah. So so there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing shady or seedy about it. But you can you can create additional personas, no problem. So that that's what I would do. But I would have to do that because me personally, I don't have enough character to play Woody Blagman. <laughs> <laughs> you're too busy fishing <laughs> I'm a character but I don't have that much character <laughs> all right guys well Put me in for beta <laughs> you got beta. It. all right so have a great week and happy fourth of July next week and we'll be back on Regular time. We'll see what I can come up with. See what kind of damage I can do between now and then. John, you still have one hand up. Hey, John. Oh yeah, hey. go ahead. Go ahead, Lily. Hey, um, just quickly, we we had um a call we were going to schedule about creating a website for me. Okay. And so I'm just wondering. Um, I we haven't scheduled the call yet, but um, is that something still that you're doing? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. I still have my web development team. I didn't, it still, I didn't kick it, them out. Oh, just, okay. Just the SEO guys. <laughs> okay. And so it's still recommended, right? Based uh -huh. on everything we're hearing today to, to have yeah. a website anyway. Oh, yeah, yeah. You, you pretty much need a forward-facing website for just about any business. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. yeah John, cool. I, was, I was just praying to give that up because I was like, I was going to open up my doors. <laughs> oh, to the oh, to the web development stuff. <laughs> now that you know, I I can't say that my SEO team wasn't valuable. I mean, they've been with me for over twenty years, but it just got to the point where that that service is it's it's not working like it once was, and for the amount of money that people are willing to pay for SEO. You just can't really supply a good quality service for that. I don't want to go down the tubes as known as, you know, providing shoddy service. And it's like I said, it's like I go out on top. I'm not going to chase something to the bottom and crash and burn with it. Never have been willing to do that. So this is the perfect exit point for me for that, that piece of my business. So I am now one of the retired seo guys <laughs> and i think i was the last one left of the original crew i was the last man standing so. i get it john i retired from speaking this year so did you yeah I've, well yeah. by this time no, i won't travel to speak anymore nope i'm done by the end of this year i might be done with a lot of stuff yeah if this works out. <laughs> but, Retired by podcast last year. I love it. It's just, yeah, life got great. Little by little. And I've noticed a lot more people coming on the pandemic that they just thought this is stuff I don't want to do anymore. Yeah. Yeah. But I'll never give up the act stuff. I actually like doing this. This is not a job. This is, I do this for fun and, you know, and keep plugging stuff in and all that. So exactly. Don't worry. I'm great not call. going anywhere. Yeah, great call this week, man. Yeah, thank you, John. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, we will yeah. see you next week. Thanks, John. Great call. Happy birthday, America. <laughs>